Hi. And we're on. We've been procrastinating, but we're here when we have updates, okay? Last time when we were on, we left you guys off with some medical stuff that came up that kind of delayed us even further with having a kid. Right. So we're just going to give high level, high level because and nobody has time for all the details y'all can ask me questions and i'll answer in the comments to try to give more detail privately or whatever but um in 2018 we had already been married a year yeah um and um i went to see my pcp because i was having this really weird pain in my head that was like persistent and consistent right behind my left ear chronic migraine way worse than a migraine though yes right and the thing is that i've had chronic migraines and headaches you know, my pretty much my whole adult life. But this one was just different. It wasn't moving around. It wasn't throbbing. It was consistent and persistent in the same exact spot. The pain felt exactly the same the entire time. Right. So, of course, when it comes to the head, instead of like... It, it, the Play no games. Yeah. So, I went to see my PCP. I had some other symptoms that were going on, but I didn't really connect. I didn't think they were all related. So, I write down all my symptoms on my little note card. My PCP comes out, and she's like, we need to take you to the ER because you may be having a stroke. And I was just like, what? And I didn't really put it together that my symptoms all together could be, were like stroke-like symptoms. I got the phone call that you got to go to the ER from your basic doctor appointment. You remember? And, like, they wheeled you out in the wheelchair. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't think that you could walk. Yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah, and so I, like, and I could walk. But I think yeah. she was taking precautions because she wasn't sure if I was about to have a stroke or yeah. if I was having a stroke. Right, right. Um, anyway, long story short, go into the ER, take a bunch of tests. They don't really find nothing on the surface. They gave me the option to stay for further analysis with the neurologist or to just go ahead and go home and just watch my symptoms. Right. We opted to stay in the hospital, get um admitted and yeah. see a neurologist. I'm glad we did. We ended up getting transferred to Scott and White. Uh -huh. They ended up doing a lumbar puncture and doing tests on my eyes. They did a lot of other stuff because I was in the hospital for like a week-ish, give a week. or take. Yeah. Um, and long story short, they found out or they were able to diagnose me with three things. One is called IIH. I call it pseudo tumor because it's just easier to explain. Yeah. Most people know what the word pseudo means, which is another word for fake yeah. um, or not real. And everybody knows what a tumor is. IIH, I don't even know how to pronounce all the words. And then um, because of that, I also had a secondary condition called papilledema, which is basically my optic nerves were swollen um, because of the pressure in my head from the excess fluid that my brain was producing or holding inside my head right. um, due to the pseudo tumor. And then they also found a whole nother non-related situation called <laughs> Chiari, Chiari malformation. malformation. Which is genetic, apparently. Which is apparently genetic. It's been there my whole life. That's not a problem, necessarily. It just puts me at, like, a higher risk of um, hemorrhaging in uh, unique situations. Right. But, like, for the most part, it, it, does, it doesn't impede or impact my daily living or anything like that. So, just real quick, just high level. The pseudotumor, <clears throat> her brain thinks, or her body thinks that her brain has a tumor. There's no tumor there, but it's going to operate and act like it's trying to actively get the tumor out of her body so that creates well all it's these... not actively trying to get the tumor out it's acting as though i have a tumor so oh, i have okay, the I symptoms you. as if there was an actual tumor there right, right. so my brain is producing excess fluid intercranial fluid right. um that normally your body dispenses that your brain naturally produces that and like you know, it, you flush, it, it, out, you flush yeah. it out through your body normally. And what's happening is that I'm producing an, an excess amount and my body is not flushing it out fast enough. Right. So it's creating my optic nerves to swell, which was the pain I was feeling behind my left ear was and actually the, my octave nerve. The pressure with your eyes. The pressure with my eyes, which then led to migraines and headaches. And, it, it, and they're it, saying if it gets too bad, you could go oh, blind. Yes, I could, it could lead to blindness untreated. Bl or, blindness? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> It could lead to blindness, yeah. uh, untreated or uncorrected, and that uh, one of the biggest uh, contributors to getting pseudotumor, which is rare, is overweight, and it happens mostly in females in their thirties that are overweight. At that time, I was two hundred and sixty-five pounds. I know thicker I than was thickums, snake. okay? Uh, she was thicker than and, and nobody was telling me I was thickums. So I was just out here living my best life. And, you look good, man. <laughs> and, uh, what's it called? 
so the goal then turned into they put me on all these medications mm -hmm. that's supposed to like help drain the fluid from my brain, which then those medications caused the other symptoms. And so then I was on more medication to help with those symptoms. And right. so I was essentially a zombie. A zombie. I was good for absolutely nothing. Okay. I'm talking about could not control myself from falling asleep or, or waking up. So I was dead to the world at two o'clock in the evening. Woke up at one in the morning, dead again by 11, woke up and then dead again by 3 p.m. And had no energy for nothing, constantly nauseous, couldn't keep nothing down, constantly had headaches or migraines or both. And I couldn't tell if it was a pseudo tumor or if it was my chronic migraines because those I still had those. Now, mind you, this is all transition because we're building a house mm -hmm. at the time. So now we're in like temporary housing. So all of our like creature comforts, you know, like that you would have inside your home to make you feel more at home and everything. That's all packed up in storage. So like you're living in a, a forward apartment. Yeah. Dealing with all of this. You know, and, and so it was, it was scary for her. It was terrifying. I think that you soldiered through it really well. Um, I'm going to say I survived through it because yeah. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I was completely physically and mentally depleted. Right. And the medication just added more symptoms on top of all the stuff I was already feeling. So fast forward, you know, a couple months, the goal was here, we're going to put you on this medication to help regulate the excess buildup and to help with some of the symptoms you're feeling. Right. But ultimately you need to lose weight. So that was when that whole weight loss journey started. Yep. Um, so fast forward, uh, it's like a year now since diagnosis, the medication, they keep increasing my dosage up and up. I think I started at like... And don't quote me on this, guys, but I want to say like 500, let's just say 500 milligrams of the main medication. Um, and I, by the time the year had came, I was at 2,000. So it was significant increase. I yeah. just, they just kept increasing because <laughs> it wasn't working. Yeah. And they've done, they were doing lumbar punctures to like check where I was at and if it was reducing in pressure and all this stuff and nothing was working. The medication was not working. I was losing weight. I had lost like 60 pounds by this time. But it needed a lot more drastic weight loss yeah. for the symptoms to significantly be mitigated. Yeah. Even before we even start the, you know, the, the, the baby journey. Yeah, which, right. So like all of that is like on pause completely because. Right. We're I just mean, trying we're to get at, me back to like yeah. a, a healthy, healthy place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I speak with my neurologist. I tell her like, hey, I'm waking up every morning in pain, like in physical pain. And it takes me like a good couple of hours before I can even function. Right. Um, and so just I can't keep nothing down, yada, 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 right? And I'm losing weight. But mind you, I'm feeling like trash this whole time. So, you know, I have to put that much more effort into working out or that much more effort into having any capacity to even think about eating strategically and eating smart or whatever, finding stuff that doesn't make me sick. Yeah. Um, so it was just, it was just nuts. So in the midst of all of that, I still managed to lose 60 pounds in a year. So now I'm at 205, 2, 2, 210, give or take. Um, as the medication stopped working, I ended up gaining like, I think another 10 pounds or whatever. Yeah. A year ago, June this year, a year from then, um, because everything was just continuously getting worse, the neurologist wanted to go ahead and refer me to a neuro neurosurgeon to get a shunt put in, which essentially is like this tube thing that goes inside your brain and drains all the fluid. Like, I guess they program it or something yeah. like that. That It was brain surgery. We wasn't trying to go through that process. I, I did this stupid yeah. thing and watched a video of the surgery. And while it may not be, what is it, invasive? Or evasive. I don't care. It's evasive to me. It is, it's just <laughs> yeah. like, I didn't want nobody in my brain guts. Right, right, and right. so, you know, I went and saw the neurosurgeon and just to kind of get his take or whatever. And he then saw me, saw my age, all that stuff. And he was just like, have you ever considered bypass? We took both options home and we talked about it, prayed about it, talked about, about it with his family. Mm -hmm. His aunt recently had just passed away from bypass. So there was already some fear with even considering that option. Yeah, it's terrifying. Um, Either way, we ended up deciding to do the bypass. I did the bypass June of last year. Mm -hmm. I ended up, now I weigh 145-ish. So I've lost all the weight now. And I'm officially off my medication altogether. So I'm not taking any pharmaceutical drugs. Look at that. Um, my symptoms are, if I was a 10 before, 
I'm like a one now, so I still have little moments here and there where the pseudo tumor tries to kick my butt. You even woke up like pleasant this morning. Right. I didn't have no headache this morning yeah. or no migraine this morning. I woke up joking and she chipper. Was smiling. You know, so she never smiles when she wakes up at all. Morning. Okay. Um, I'm the she, definition like of not a morning person. Yeah. So <laughs> symptoms completely like gone for the most part. Right. They're still there. So now we're a year out from that surgery. Um, I'm Thankful I did that instead of the brain thing because after further research, the brain surgery or the shunt has like really bad success rates. So, and I would have to again, keep going back to get it adjusted, fixed, replaced. We and I, chose the right I option. I wasn't doing that. Yeah. yeah. So we chose the right option for us. We're grateful we did it. We're now here. And now we're ready to start having the baby conversation. Yeah. So medical history aside, we'll get you up to date what happens next because we got a chance to actually meet. The IVF doctor. Um, We've he's already had cool. a couple appointments, but yeah. that'll be in the next videos. Next video. But we're giving you all this background right. so that when I start to talk about the things that I'm anxious about and I'm stressing about, you guys have a better understanding of like why those right. things are so so much of a, a, an anxiety. We're laying the foundation. Yeah, we're laying, laying the, the groundwork. But anyway. Yeah. Sorry that this video is so late. Thank you guys for tuning in. Right. We are going to have a YouTube, so stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. And until then. We love you guys. Thank you for the support time. and prayer.